So let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply Kirchhoff's rules that we spoke about in a previous lecture. So suppose we have the following electric circuit as shown in this diagram. So we have three resistors shown here and we have a single battery that has an EMF of 12 volts. So we want to use Kirchhoff's rules to essentially calculate what I1 is and I2 is. So we define I1 to be the electric current that flows through this region of our wire from D to A. And we define I2 to be the electric current that flows through this section of our electric circuit beginning at point A, going to point B, to point C, and to point D. So we have two unknowns, so that means to calculate those two unknowns, we need two equations. So these two equations we can obtain from use by using Kirchhoff's first rule and Kirchhoff's second rule. So let's begin by applying Kirchhoff's first rule. So Kirchhoff's first rule, also known as the junction rule, tells us the electric current that goes into any junction is equal to the electric current that comes out of that same junction. So that implies if we examine junction A, I1 is equal to I2. So, the electric current going into junction A is equal to the electric current coming out of junction A. So, I1 is equal to I2. And let's call this equation, equation I. Now, before we apply Kirchhoff's second rule to determine the second equation, let's look at the following statement. So, electric current generally travels from positive electrode of the battery to the negative electrode of the battery. And as it travels from the positive to the negative region, it essentially passes through resistors. And when it passes through resistors, it loses a quantity of voltage that is given by Ohm's law. So let's begin by applying Kirchhoff's second rule. So we want to choose a closed loop. So we choose our loop to be A, B, C, D, A. So our loop is given by A, B, C, D, A. Notice this is a closed loop that begins at some initial point A and ends at that that same initial point given by A. Now, recall that the voltage drop across any resistor is given by Ohm's law. We take the product of the electric current through that resistor and the quantity of resistance found on that resistor. So as our positive charge travels from A to B, it passes this resistance given by 3 ohms. So because it's traveling from the positive to the negative electrode, that means the voltage drops. So we have a negative sign. So the drop in voltage is equal to negative I2 because I2 is the electric current that passes through this resistor. So negative I2 multiplied by the quantity of resistance given by 3 ohms. So next we look at our I2 that begins at point B and goes to point C. So as it travels in this direction and passes through this resistance. So once again, we have negative I2 multiplied by 6 ohms. So next we are going from C to D and once again we're dealing with current I2. So we have negative I2 multiplied by 4 ohms. And finally, we're examining section D to section A. So now we have electric current I1. And as it travels from D to A, it goes from a negative to a positive side of our battery. So that means it gains voltage and the quantity of voltage is, uh, it gains is given by 12 volts. So we have positive because it gains it 12 volts. And by Kirchhoff's second rule, the sum of all the change in voltages is equal to zero. And let's call this equation 2i. So, now we have two equations and two unknowns. We can use these equations to calculate for our two unknowns. 
So let's begin with equation two. So we, we essentially want to combine all these terms and solve for I2. So we see 12 volts is equal to, we take all these and bring them to this side. We have three I2 plus six I2 plus four I2 is equal to 12 volts. So now we solve for I2, and we see that I2 is equal to, well, it's equal to 12 volts divided by 13 ohms, and that gives us about 0.92 amps is our electric current given by I2. Now we go back to equation I. From equation I, we know that I1 is equal to I2, so that implies that I1 is also 0.92 amps.